Hello, so welcome to this special webinar, which forms part of the Festival of Stamps virtual event, which is currently running on the allaboutcoins.co.uk website. I'm Matthew Hill, I'm the editor of the website and of Coin Collector magazine, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. We're delighted to be hosting two webinars from our festival partners, NGC, and there's a second session taking place tomorrow at the same time. So a quick piece of housekeeping before we begin, if you'd like to ask a question, um, during the presentation, use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and following the presentation we'll be putting these questions to Colin. Um, so do send us those questions in. To start off, um, I'd like to welcome Colin Blythe, a Senior Numismatist at PMG. Uh, Colin has a Masters of Business Administration from Queen's University in Canada and he's been a paper money collector for more than 20 years. Um, as you'll be able to tell from my accent, I'm based in the UK Colin is speaking today from PMG's world headquarters in Sarasota in Florida, where I presume the weather is a little bit warmer than it is here. So I'll I'm not, that. yeah, well, I'm, I'm a little jealous. But um, without further ado, um, Colin, over to you to discuss third party certification for your collectible notes. Thanks very much, Andrew. And uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on what part of the world you're listening in from. And uh, I'd, I'd like to start by thanking the Festival of Coins organizers and, and Matthew for inviting me to speak today uh, and to give you an introduction on third party certification of notes and how it, how it works. And a little bit of a background about myself. I've been a, a dedicated uh, collector of paper money for the last 25 years. And uh, lately I've been very focused and specialized on uh, paper money of South and Central America and the, the private issue banks. And uh, I, I think I'm, you know, I've got a dream job right now. I get to uh, grade notes. I uh, get to talk to uh, my client liaison with our auction houses and our dealer clients. And I also negotiate uh, large volume bulk deals. And uh, I also get to research and write articles on paper money for uh, PMG's website. So uh, it's, it's uh, so fortunate. I was just talking to Matthew before, before this started that, uh, you know, that I'm working, uh, when you work at a job that you really love, it doesn't seem like work. So uh, I'm fortunate to be able to do that. Um, so while I come from a, a collector background, with uh, with my current job, I've got a, a, a very good uh, introduction and uh, understanding of the commercial aspect of the hobby. And so the, the auctions, houses, and the dealers that provided much needed liquidity into the market. So as collectors, we need, we need a good, healthy commercial side to the business. So I, I get to see both sides to it. Um, and... I hope that by the end of the, the talk that you have a better understanding of the benefits of third party certification and, and then also uh, a better understanding of PMG as a company. And as, uh, as Matthew said, at the end of the presentation, there will be time for some questions and answers. So the, I'm gonna split the, my talk into two main parts. The first part is why use third party certification for your collectible notes. And I, th I think maybe bluntly, <laughs> we, we could say, why, why should you part with your hard earned money uh, to let someone else evaluate and give you an opinion on the condition of your note? So I, I want to I want to go through that. And, and specifically, how do you benefit from that? And then the, the second part, uh, after you, you see a benefit, in third party certification, you're thinking about maybe maybe this is for me or I want to try it out. I'll then uh, talk a little bit about PMG and why we should have consideration as your third party certification company of choice. So let's go to the first part of the presentation, which is uh, why use third party certification for your notes. And I'm going to, uh, the, the, there's really five key benefits that I'm going to to discuss here. And those are in the bullet points below. So the, the, first, the first benefit, the first bullet point is I think the most important, and that's why it's bullet point number one, is authenticity. And um, I, I think sometimes this may seem obvious or simple to people. Is this note genuine? And that really should be the first question 
anybody asks when you're buying any collectible, is this real? Is it genuine? And as I said, it may seem simple or obvious. Yes, of course it looks real. But unfortunately, this is not always the case. And I, I can tell you, I've seen a lot of altered and counterfeit notes out there. And um, I, I really, there's no point in, in being able to be an expert grader and putting a grade to something if, if the, in the first place you can't tell if the item's genuine or authentic. So that's, that's the, the first thing that uh, we look at when a note comes in here, is it genuine? And really a collector, for example, I've used, uh, you can see the, the solid eight serial number note, uh, the standard charter note uh, on this uh, screen. And a collector can pay thousands of dollars premium for the, the lucky eight serial number in China. And you know, if you're gonna put up that kind of money for this note, you want to know that the, those are really solid eight serial numbers and not uh, threes, a couple of threes in there turned into eights. And, and the same, same type of example um, for Confederate notes, there's a lot of contemporary counterfeits out there. Um, as, a, as a buyer of a Confederate note or any note, um, is, this, is this a genuine note or is it a contemporary counterfeit? And the, the second key benefit, of course, which most people are, are very aware of with third-party certification is, is the grade aspect of it. And I think uh, the, the grade is really one of the emotional, most emotional and hotly contested uh, parts of our hobby. Um, I, I, if you could show a, a note to 10 different collectors standing in a circle, I'm quite sure you'd get multiple opinions on what the grade of that note is. So the, the intention of third party grading is to provide the certification service will provide consistency that if they, if they grade a note a certain grade uh, this week, it should be that grade uh, if they graded it five weeks from now. So just, just a little bit of background of what, of what the, the generation of third party grading and how it all, all came about. Uh, the, the collectible paper money market like, uh, like coins or other, other uh, collectible markets are, were, were and, and are under threat from uh, counterfeit and altered notes, but also significantly from notes that, are, that have been processed and treated to give the appearance of a higher note. So example, they've been pressed or they've been repaired. And so someone's trying to pass off uh, an extremely fine note by pressing out some some folds to make it look almost uncirculated or uncirculated. And, and that, uh, that kind of deception uh, was, was what drove a lot of people away from the hobby and, and had fear about buying the notes. So the, the whole concept of third party grading was to provide uh, an opinion on the note that was, uh, was not an opinion coming from the seller of that note. Because let's face it, a seller that owns a note uh, is in a position of conflict of interest. They, because they own that note, there's financial motivation for, for the seller to, uh, to uh, stress as much positives about the note as they can when they're selling it. And I think just on the flip side, the buyer tends to do the same. They'll tend to look at every tiny flaw and try to, uh, try to say that means the note's actually in, in worse condition. Um, so I think, uh, I, I think for example, if you went out to the, the floor, I've got, I've got uh, just a normal US dollar here, but when you, when you see, when you go out and you're buying this from a dealer, first of all, you're in a situation where the, maybe you're on the, the floor of a show and the, the lighting is just horrible. You have these over, overhead lights. You're under a little bit of pressure to make a decision on what, what grade this is. So you're looking at it saying, well, I think this is probably about a 30. It looks okay, um, but you're not, not 100% sure, and, and then versus having a note that's third party graded that tells you exactly what, what they think the, the grade is. It takes that uncertainty out of the decision-making process. So, so again, it's, the, it's this independent third party um, grade assessment is really, I think the, the great terminology, it's really a neutral arbitrator between the buyer and the seller. And they're giving a, an independent opinion that we don't have any, uh, any financial uh, skin in the game on that note beyond the grading fee 
that we, we achieved for that note. So whether it was uh, a mint state and circulated note, or whether it was a, a low grade note, um, that, that's our opinion on the grade and the financial. We, we don't benefit one way or the other on the financial uh, side of it. So we're, we're focused strictly on providing an opinion on the grade and quality of that note. So th that's, uh, that really comes to a situation where you're then dealing, I want to buy this note. Um, you take, you remove that argument of, is this an EF, it's a, is it a VF? That argument is, is pushed off the side because uh, you have that grade on the note. And now the, the buyer and seller can just discuss for that grade, what is a fair market price. And so uh, certified notes have made the paper market uh, safer and more transparent. In other words, you're getting what you, you pay for. And I'd like to just take a side here because there's, there's people that don't use uh, third party grading services and we throw around the term uncirculated or extremely fine or very fine. But I, I wanted to just make sure everyone's clear here that certification services will typically use a 70 point numerical grade scale and that's uh, derived from the Sheldon uh, coin grade scale. So we are, we're stealing things from the, from the coin side, but this, this 70 point scale is, is a very detailed scale and you can see uh, I've, I've broken it down all these uh, numbers at the right. This is how PMG uses the uh, 70 point grade scale, but from 60 to 70, that's an uncirculated, then you have uh, 50 to 58 is uh, almost uh, about uncirculated. And then a 40 to 45 is extremely fine. 20 to 35 is very fine. 12 to 15 is fine and four to 10 is good. But what I wanna point out is because we're using a numeric scale, it's very different from the non-numeric scales that, uh, that are out there. So people that are not familiar with the numeric scales, a, a dangerous, situation happens if they try to compare that to uh, on a one-to-one -one basis against the non-numeric scares like the uh, IBNS scale, International Banknote Society, and they have a, a descriptor scale, so there's no, no numeric numbers, so they'll have uncirculated or very fine. And, and I wanted to, you know, a good highlight example is the IBNS uncirculated grade is a binary grade. It's either uncirculated or it's not. There's no degrees of uncirculation on, on that. Whereas if you look at the 70 point numerical scale, we have grades ranging from 60 to 70 in an uncirculated grade. And this is, this is coming from, um, if, you're, if you're out on the floor, you know inherently in your mind that not all uncirculated notes are equal. Um, some are just have blazing color, they're um, perfectly centered, you know, that's, that's the, the uncirculated you note, you're gonna pick over one that's not very well centered, maybe has, has a little bit of teller handling on it, whereas the, another note doesn't. Um, that's, that's what the uh, uh, 70 point grade scale is, is doing, is trying to uh, tell you which ones are truly superb gem uncirculated, and which ones are lower uncirculated. But you get into a problem in that if you try to say, um, Oh, PMG's uncirculated or third party uncirculated doesn't seem to match my idea of uncirculated for an IBNS, um, you'll, you'll be in trouble. So just make sure you understand these are two different grade scales. Our grade scale is available to view on our website and uh, pmgnotes.com and you'll see all the, uh, the, the definitions there. So in addition to um, numeric grade scale, there's also qualifiers that are used. And uh, so these are non-numeric qualifiers. And this tries to recognize that grading is not just a scientific thing where we, we put it in a machine and measure the folds of the center and out pops an answer. There's, there's the technical side to grading where we are looking at folds, but there's also the art of grading where we're looking at the, the appearance of the note, the embossing, how, how, uh, how well centered it looks and all, all these things come into it. And uh, probably, probably the three most important uh, descriptors I'd like to point out are, are a descriptor that uh, talks about original or exceptional paper quality and uh, PMG uses a EPQ designation. And that's a, that's a designation to, to tell the collector that this is a completely original note. It hasn't been physically 
chemically or materially processed and read into that, you know, washed, pressed, um, to give the appearance of a higher note. So you will see in the market that an EPQ, exceptional paper quality designation, will achieve significantly higher prices over a non-EPQ because of that originality of the paper. Uh, there's also another nice designation, which is the star designation. And that's, uh, that's really an eye appeal designation. I love this one because uh, to me, that's, that's a word to note that, first of all, it must be an EPQ note, exceptional paper quality note, and it has to exhibit for that note um, very, very strong plates uh, or overprint and or overprint embossing, really vibrant ink, pristine paper quality. And, and I, I can always tell something's a star note when I pick it up and I go, wow, um, that's a good sign. This is, this is an above average note for that, for that grade and type note type. So I like to call that a wow note. On the flip side, uh, a, a negative uh, uh, designation is what we refer to as net. And when you see net beside our grade, this means there's, there's other problems on the note that are more severe that can be reflected in the numeric grade itself. And so, for example, if a note was torn in half, it was then uh, rejoined together, that would, that would be a note that would uh, get a net designation. It would have a numerical grade, but it would have net. And on the back you'd have a of the holder, you'd have a comment like severed and reattached. So another good benefit, the, th the third one I've got here is the description of the note. And the, the description of the note, or what we commonly call the verification process at PMG, is, is what goes on the label of the holder. And that's exactly, what exactly is this note? And again, that might seem obvious. Well, don't you know, <laughs> can't you tell when you pick up the note what it is? Not always. Um, it, it could be in a foreign language. It could be there's no date visible on it. Um, you don't know, it could be from a private bank issue that you're not really sure of. So the holder will, will specify uh, what the year is, what the series, what variety, what if there's a catalog reference number, and that goes on the label. So I've got, uh, for example, here's, here's a, a note in a PMG holder. And if I look at the, the top, the label, this, this is the description, the verification information we were just discussing. So on this, you probably can't see it very well, but I'll, I'll read it to you. But the top tells you the country. So we can see this note's from Hong Kong. And the, the next line here shows uh, what bank it's from. And this is from the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, which you can read in the top line here. And the second line on our holder will show the, the catalog reference number that this is under, and that's the, the PIC number, 178F, is the standard catalog of world paper money. That's the what we what collectors refer to as, as the PIC number because Albert PIC was the original editor of standard catalogs. We just have, have always kept the word PIC number, but that's, that's really just the standard catalog reference number. There's also a, a KN Boom number, which uh, for, for this type of, uh, of series, a lot of collectors in the world also use K and B numbers, so we also have that beside the pick number. You can see the year, the denomination here. We even um, will add the serial number, of course, because that's a, that is a unique identifier to this note. And we talk about the watermark has a warrior's head and a, a, a number 100 on it. So what I really like about this is once you have that in the holder, all the information of what that note is goes with with the note and it stays with that note. You don't have to have little separate sticky notes or, or understanding what it is, it's, it's all there for you. So I, I just mentioned the word variety when I showed you that, uh, that holder and third party grading services are notorious for throwing around the words variety and pedigree without really telling people what they are. And so I thought I'd just take a, a minute here and, and talk about varieties and pedigrees so that when you hear me talk about them, you'll, you'll at least understand what I'm talking about. But a variety is used to describe all notes, so it's a group of notes that share a distinctive subset of characteristics found within a, a larger population group of notes. And that's a mouthful and it's, it's a bit mind-numbing, but let me use an example. Um, 
So we, I, I've got an example here of a 1937 Nicaragua 10 centavos note, which is, which is referenced pick 85. And that has two distinct varieties. And one is 85, which we call 85A, and the other is 85B. And the only difference, that is exactly the same look, the plate, the only difference between those two notes is, uh, is the signature title at the bottom. And one is uh, Director Herente, and the second variety has the signature title Herente Anarel. And the, but there is a price difference between those two and collectors want to have both varieties. So we do, we do list this as long as they're in the, the what collectors accept as standard reference catalogs, um, we will attribute that on our holder. There's no charge that that goes, that goes uh, normally on the holder. We also do, if there's any fancy type serial numbers like a descending ladder or a, a radar serial number, that will get attributed on the holder as well. And, but what about varieties that are not listed in these, uh, in these standard catalogs? And so when I meet a standard catalog, I'm talking about the Friedberg catalog or, or Charlton in Canada or the, the standard catalog for most uh, uh, paper money collectors. But there is an increasing number of very, very specialized catalogs as, as collectors drill deeper and deeper into their hobby. Um, you know, there's, a, there's collectors and catalogers that are providing more and more information certain to specific uh, countries and to note types. And I give the example, there's, there's a specialized catalog called the Paper Money of Argentina. And we would actually, uh, on request and for a fee, we will go and research that catalog and put that, um, that, that reference that catalog and their reference number on it. Uh, we also have situations, uh, for example, in, in China, there's a, what we call fluorescent attributions. And these are UV reactive security features on notes. And so for a fee, there's, there's collectors that want to have the, the three or four different uh, types of security features that are, that are found in these notes that are not listed in standard catalogs. We, we will do that. So we will take ultraviolet light and look at those features and classify that according to the fluorescent attribution should a customer wish to have that on their, their holder. And we can also have situations where if you look at this uh, standard catalog, they might have a note, a pick number, or a note with a date range. If the customer wants to collect every single date, and I want that specifically mentioned on the holder, we can do that as well, as well as uh, different signature combinations that are not necessarily uh, referenced or given a, a specialized uh, variety number. Um, Pedigree, so unlike variety, uh, pedigree is an attribute that pertains specifically to an individual note. So it's unique to that note. And commonly, I think when we hear the word pedigree, we'll, we'll immediately go, these are, these are famous collectors of the past that own this, this note. And, and that's what the pedigree means. And yes, it does, it does mean that in some cases, but you can also put your own name as the current owner on that note. And you can, and there's an example showing here where we've got the a collector's requested their their collection uh, name on the back of the holder. We will do that. We can also do fun things like uh, um, recognizing that it's a plate note status that this note was actually in in the book. And there, there's a lot of people that are very interested in buying notes that are that are plate notes. And I think that's a great pedigree to put on a holder. And it does uh, more often than not uh, achieve good value for a customer to indicate that as well. But on the fun side, you can also recognize a, a birthday or anniversary date using that note. So um, I, I would call this more of an individualized uh, way of, um, of attributing your, your collection. So PMG, uh, maybe we have a little bit more flexibility than say the coin side or the NGC side because we have a lot of real estate on that label to be able to do things like that. So that's, that's kind of a fun, uh, a fun thing you can you can consider as you start building your collection. Uh, the the fourth benefit for you of why using third party certification is the preservation and encapsulation of your note. And I think uh, sometimes I'm gu even guilty of this, but a lot of collectors oh we're we're, we're throwing this in plastic, and I, I cringe a little bit when people say the word plastic. Um, because I have this connotation of, of plastic as kind of this soft, uh, 
that there's a lot of uh, uh, plastic softeners in it, polyvinyl chlorides that could leach out and react. And we've seen some notes that have come in here that, that have been stored improperly, that, that, that have been contaminated badly by Im improper um, uh, storage. But so, so we don't use the word plastic. This, this is a, a very, very high quality, museum quality inert material. So it's not chemically reactive, it's acid free. This, this is made for long-term storage of your notes and and uh, museums like the Smithsonian use this type of material when they're storing material. Um, the, the note is uh, the the holder itself is heavy gauge material. So if I go back to this this note I was was showing you, uh, typically you might see um, collectors having something like this a little a little flip. That they'll put in, and as long as it's high quality mylar, that that's fine. But you can see the gauge of this; it's very light gauge and thin. You can bend this quite easily. It's also open at the top, and you can slide a note into the holder and and take it out fairly easy. But note that it is open at the top, so it's exposed. So um, environment environmental contamination. Uh, you know, air can flow in and out, uh, and bad things can flow in and out. So, with with the third party holder and looking at ours specifically, that note is sealed on all four sides here. So the label is sealed up at the top in its own pouch, and the note itself is sealed. So this is this is free from contamination, and um, cer certainly this this type of holder. Is is fine, but I'll give you the example. I mean, I've talked to the collectors. You, know, you have this sitting on your desk, and they, were, they had a tin of coke, and the, the tin knocked over, and the coke flowed over the note. You think, oh, that's great. It's in plastic, except the capillary action of that opening sucked all the the Coca Cola into the note, and the whole note was immediately drenched with sugary drink. Um, so that that's obviously a disaster if you spilled your your soft drink. On, on this, it, you're not going to have a problem except having to wipe it off. So, um, just just to recognize, this is a also much much heavier gauge. So you looked at the other one, this holder, which is just very very thin and much easier to bend. You you would have to really be making an effort to to bend this over and increase it. This can take a lot of a lot of handling, but it's also the right amount. Of, it's easily transferable for. Um, collectors and dealers to store. It's not so thick that, uh, you know, we've got a three quarter inch holder or something that weighs 15 pounds. So this is a, this is a an excellent long-term storage. It's also uh, tamper evident. Uh, we, we have it sealed. You can see the, uh, the pattern, maybe you can't, but there's a, there's a pattern on the ceiling around the outside. We also have a hologram Im images on the, the back and there's, there's a barcode and certification number on the back, so you'd be able to check that. Um, there's also, uh, so while there's overt security features, there's also covert security features that that uh, only PMG knows about. Um, I, I, I guess just finally on this, um, I, I've showed you some standard size holders, but we also can hold, hold a very large notes. We go up to uh, 400 by 477 millimeters, but we can go up to, uh, for certain things, we could even push up to 755 millimeters, but it, it's on. We have to look at it and make sure it's suitable to go up that size. And and lastly, on third-party certification is uh, insurance claims. And what do I mean about uh, about this? Well, um, if you have um, like a lot of people, market value-based insurance. If if your collection is stolen and for example you you have this note it's a it's a vf you have it in raw though as a what you feel is a vf 35 raw uh a ba banco national 1899 50 pesos note that's uh, that's overprinted on a, a banco de marquis note um you you lose that and you tell the insurance company well i lost a, a it's been stolen it was a vf 25 and the next question is going to be well how much did you pay for it? Well, I paid a thousand, but it's really worth five thousand now. Well, 
according to who? What, how do I know what that grade was? You're, you're saying it's VF, but how do I know that? If you had it certified by a third party grade, there'd be a record of it. Um, you'd have a, a specific grade there and a lot of auction market information to be able to, to be able to verify a note in that specific grade sold at X. It's much easier to attach a value onto something that's been independently graded than something out of your own collection that you're just having to basically say, here's what I think the grade was. And that, uh, that serial number on the back of the note that it shows, this is the back of the holder at the, at the top right. There's a, there's a certification number here and a, and a serial number, and that's unique to this note. And we have that in our system. You also can look that up online just as an insurance company can. And it's great because it can track uh, ownership of that note, who actually got it certified. So you'd be able to prove that that, yes, I was the one that submitted that. So if that showed up uh, in other dealers showcase that he, he purchased a, a stolen note, you'd be able to have some pretty strong evidence that that was your note that, uh, that uh, is being sold. So, to, to move into the next part of the presentation, why choose PMG to certify your notes? Um, I, I think that, you know, once you've decided that, yes, there's a benefit to having your notes certified, um, I want to talk a little bit about if you've decided that, why, you, why I feel that PMG deserves your consideration as a third-party certification company of choice. So let me walk through that. But let me tell you first, who is PMG? So PMG is the world's largest third-party authentication and encapsulation service for paper money. We've graded uh, over five and a half million notes since 2005, and we're headquartered in Sarasota, Florida. And this is in a large, that's where I'm sitting right now. Uh, this facility is a large 60,000 square foot facility. There's two very large walk-in vaults. There's a staff of armed guards and more than 150 security cameras in the building. And the reason why I'm telling you this is to give you comfort that when your note comes here, it's going to be safe here and, and treated in the right conditions. It, this is not a mom and pop uh, uh, one bedroom organization where we're grading your notes. This is a, this is a professional, large, well, uh, very, very secure facility. And we also have uh, offices internationally in addition to our Florida headquarters. So we have offices in London, Munich, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. So it's truly a, a global footprint. And uh, we work, we're continually expanding. So it's, it's very exciting. And uh, there should be an office somewhere that's relatively close to you to be able to submit your notes to that office. You don't have to submit them into the United States. And so PMG or, or paper money guarantee is part, uh, is part of that uh, uh, under an umbrella of the certified collectibles group, which is, which is a very large group of um, collectible uh, certification services. So in addition to the paper money, there's the coin divisions, NGC and NCS, which uh, probably most of the uh, listeners are well aware of. Um, there's also the comic book, division, the CGC and, and the, uh, the um, conservation side to, to the comic books. But there's also part of CGG, brand new is our, um, the trading card division where we do magic and Pokemon cards. And I've just been blown away. This has just started several months ago and, and the guys are struggling to keep up with the submissions. There is so much interest in this. It it's really is incredible to see. Uh, there's a stamp division. Um, there's a collectibles authentication guarantee, which is really our special collectible services division. And if you saw the uh, Neil Armstrong Apollo 11 auctions on Heritage, that was this division that, that certified these, that these, these items came from Neil Armstrong's collection. And really excited to say that there's a new division starting up as well, our certified sports guarantee, uh, CSG. And that's, uh, that's starting up right now, and we expect that to be under full steam um, in, the, in the coming months. So again, this is a large, financially secure 
family with, a, with a very deep pockets. And why choose uh, PMG to certify your notes? I think the, the number one reason really is trust. And without, uh, you know, really simply put, without trust, PMG wouldn't exist. That's the value of what you're offering the, the customers' uh, products that, that we certify. The, uh, the buyers and sellers and auction houses out there um, have confidence that what we say this, this note is in the holder is. And collectors around the world feel comfortable based on this trust buying the notes online and sight unseen. And in the COVID pandemic these days, uh, we're seeing that being even more important. Online buying has really become a key way of collectors to be able to buy with shows out of commission right now. And third party certification allows those buyers to have the confidence that what they're buying is, is uh, what they think they're buying. Um, and that trust comes from impartiality as well. So PMG graders uh, do not buy and sell commercially. Um, while they may be collectors like myself, we, we are not allowed to, to buy notes, have them graded here, and then commercially sell them. It would be a very big conflict of interest to grading your own notes. In fact, the, uh, the graders here uh, are, do not even know who is submitting these notes. So that when they come into the verif, obviously when it's received, we know who's submitting them, and the uh, the verification team will know who's submitting them. But then that information is taken off when it goes into the next grading step. So we're we're not getting influenced by who's submitting them or knowing that we're we're looking strictly at the note. And it's because of this trust. If I go into uh, really key for most most collectors selling is is a huge part of this is that ultimately we all have to sell our notes so whether whether it's us that's going to sell them or whether it's our heirs that's, that are going to sell them ultimately they're going to be sold we're just we're just short-term uh, holders of these notes so it's very very important um, and and the the trust factor that goes in this allows these notes to be sold uh, much more easily. They're, they're very, very liquid. They're, they're, people trust them. Um, so for example, that, that thousand rupee Indian note there, um, it's a VF35. It's a VF35 in the holder and it's a VF35 raw out of the holder. Why does it bring so much more in that holder? And it does. And, and the reason is that a buyer will, can trust that Yes, this is really a VF35. It's not Bob Smith telling me it's VF35. It's, it's expert independent graders with their opinion saying it's, it's VF35. And what tends to happen when it's raw is people will downgrade, think there, there could be a problem I can't see, there may be some issue, and they, they won't tend to stretch. They'll, they'll say, I'm going to factor that into my purchase price. And you will see this time, time and again, when you look at a raw note, and you look at a, a certified note, the certified note will, will regularly and continually bring more money than that equal raw note. And that, and that reason is really coming down to trust. And the, the trust, especially for, uh, if I look at PMG side, is comes with our people and it's the expertise. And we have more than uh, 20 full-time graders here as well as numerous outside consultants that we uh, that we talked to and I, I can tell you when I first joined PMG I thought I knew how to grade oh, I know I, I'm pretty good no I was I was truly humbled when I when I came here to see the the expertise and I, I realized how much more I needed to to learn and, and and our senior graders have more than a decade of experience they're grading eight hours a day five days a week They've seen all kinds of note types. They really know their stuff. And so, you know, perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised when I came here and said, oh, I, I have a lot to learn. Um, you're just not putting in that kind of time into becoming an expert or grader. So while I think everyone should know how to grade, also recognize there's a lot of stuff that's very difficult to see in a note if it's been expertly altered or processed. Um, the average grader might not be able to pick that up as much as a professional would. And I'd also point out that the, because grading is an opinion, 
we, we have a team effort here. There's multiple graders that look at a note and give an opinion. And then the final, the, the head grader will give the final opinion based on the feedback from the other, the, the grades received from the other graders, what the final grade should be on that, that note. And, and what I love about the, the, the international focus that we have is that um, there, there's expertise all over the world. So if I got a, a test note in, for example, I could, I could call our, our Munich office and, and talk to one of the graders there as a world expert in, in test notes. If I get a, a colonial note, which I'm, I'm not as strong in, I can go and talk to um, one of the guys in our US office here that, uh, that can recite backwards and forwards everything you wanna know about colonial notes. So really what I'm saying is we're all learning from each other and there's experts, specialized experts in all part of this company. And, and we, uh, we pick up the information from each other and we all, we all become better. So we're continually learning. I think also uh, to point out on our expertise is that we have uh, very, very expensive high tech equipment that the average collector couldn't uh, or just realistically wouldn't ever be able to have access to. And for example, uh, X-ray fluorescent anal analyzer, you, know, you might hear XRF, um, that looks at non-organic elemental, elemental, <laughs> elemental properties of notes. And for example, the Ming notes, we, we know what the, the characteristics are of the inks. Uh, so we look at copper, zinc, lead, other, other things we, can, we will be able to tell is that, is that indicative of the time period? If not, it could be an alert that, uh, that something strange is going on with this note. We can also look at the note in different light sources, ultraviolet, uh, infrared, LED. It's very, very uh, useful and helpful for picking up alterations. And you can see that image at the, the bottom right. You can see the, uh, the six has been altered in that serial number. And we also have an extensive database that we keep of genuine and counterfeit notes. Um, really importantly here is the, I think anyways, the PMG guarantee. And I'm, I'm always surprised when I talk to people on the floor that not a lot of people are really fully aware of the PMG guarantee or what it means. And this is, uh, every note that is in a PMG holder is backed by a comprehensive guarantee, which is the strongest in the industry. And what the guarantee is, is we're guaranteeing that the note is genuine and it's not, on, it's not overgraded. And this is, uh, there's no preset spending limit on this, it's not capped out. It's whatever that note is, is worth. And, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is something that it's not just the person who submitted the note that has the guarantee. That guarantee travels with the note. So you could sell that note a hundred times over its lifetime and the hundredth buyer has that guarantee. If you own that PMG holder, you own the guarantee. And anybody, if you, if you believe this is counterfeit or overgraded, anybody, can submit that note back to PMG under an appearance review and, and challenge it. And we will, we will review that note. And on the customer service side, I just want to talk about this. This is a, I, I'm definitely biased here, but I, I do talk to PMG members out there and, and I, I consistently hear that our customer service is the best in the industry. And we have a long-term outlook. We want your repeat business. Um, we, we have a team of experts around the world that can respond in a, in a timely manner to your calls. So when you call here, you'll actually talk to a human being. And uh, that can, if they don't have the answer, they can get the answer for you and they will. And, and then finally here on YPMG, which, which I love, is, is the online resources. And, and these are available on our website free. You, you can go and become a member at zero cost and have access to all our online resources. And the, for example, the population report. So this, this shows you all the notes we've graded and what, uh, what condition they are. So if you look at, uh, uh, you know, you're out on the floor and someone offers you a, a PMG graded 66th note and says, you know, this is the finest known, it's extremely rare. You'd be able to independently verify that. Just get on your phone, pop into the, the site and look at this. And if you suddenly see, well, actually there's, there's uh, 50 uh, PMG 66 notes graded in there. Maybe it's not quite as rare as this person was telling me, or yes, it is quite as rare. Um, there's also, we offer a, a paper money guide, and this is really like the, the information that you typically find in the standard catalog of world paper money. 
that shows the notes and gives you a, uh, an estimated catalog uh, value. And I would say like any catalog values, they're out of date as soon as you print them. Um, so ultimately you should always get, uh, you know, the, the prices are changing weekly. So you should get your information more from more recent things. But I, what I like on this is it gives you a relative value. So at least you can flip into here and see, is this an expensive note or, or a low cost note? And on the PMG registry side, this is the fun side of the organization, really a, an online community. We have both uh, two, two uh, concepts here, one a, a competitive set and a signature set. And competitive sets allow you to build uh, by grade, rarity, and other factors. You can build a, a set and you compete against other people in that same set category and there's prizes awarded each year. Or a signature set, you can, you can build your own specialized, customized set. So it's really, uh, really to look, you know, if you can share photos, you can share how does your set compare against others that are trying to specialize. So it's really, really an online community. And then, uh, uh, of course, the, there's a PMG lookup certification. So that, that number that I showed you on the back of the, the holder, that's the certification number. You can go and uh, punch that in to the, uh, to the website and it'll verify the information that we have in our system and online. Um, and, then, and then finally here, um, the online resources that we have, I, I really like this. It, it's, uh, if you go under a website and look at the, uh, the news side, you can see tons of articles and announcements about what's happening in the industry, what are some latest auction results, what are some new discoveries that have been going on, what are new issues, and we also do independent research. I, I do some of that as well. That uh, we'll do some background information on Note and hopefully provide information for you that uh, that you weren't aware of and make you a, a more educated collector. So, I, I think in if I, just to summarize very quickly, I won't go through everything, but. The benefits of third-party certification key is this note genuine, so the, they'll confirm that it's authentic, then they'll give an independent opinion on the grade, and then it gets encapsulated in an archival, high-quality, um, uh, safe, long-term storage holder. And once you've decided that third-party certification has some benefit to you, then uh, consider PMG as, uh, as your third-party certification of, of choice. And why PMG, it's really, I think, uh, considering we, we are the largest and we have the most uh, consistency and backing in, in auctions, there's, there's a, a deep trust of PMG and that trust translates into a higher selling price in the market. Uh, we also have a very deep uh, team of, uh, of graders on around there from coin to paper money to everything, but the expertise in paper money is, is really world class here. And that's all backed up by a PMG guarantee. So I hope you've uh, learned a little bit more about third party certification and uh, know a bit more about PMG. And if you're considering to use a third party certification, I welcome you to, to log on to uh, pmgnotes.com or .uk, whatever the case may be and uh, get more information about how you can submit notes to us. So Matt, I'd, I'd, uh, thank you very much and I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, brilliant, thank you so much. Um, I, I just love the idea of having that kind of seal of approval in your collection so you can kind of have, have that um, certification, you know, the way it's presented. Uh, I think it works really nicely for banknotes. Um, one question I, uh, we've, we've had a lot of questions, um, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll rattle through them. But one question I have, 5.5 million notes have been certified. So there must be yeah. quite a large team of experts you have there. Absolutely, and I, I mentioned that we have uh, 20 full-time graders. Um, and that's just the, the tip of the iceberg because we also have, for each country, we have specialists that we can reach out to if there's some very unique note that, that we haven't seen. But on top, the, the graders is one part of our aspect. We also have a team of research and what we call the verification side. So when the note comes in, they'll, they first say, here's what the note is before it goes to the grading team. So there's a big team looking at that. We also have a receiving, a separate receiving group 
that can expertly handle unpacking the notes. And so it's, it's really like a production line that each of these divisions uh, has, has very specific expertise and, and, and people that, uh, that really know what they're doing. So after, after grading, then it goes to quality control and, and slabbing and then another quality control. So um, yeah, it's a, I would say th there's, a, there's a huge deep team of, uh, of graders, but we're also s surrounded by some excellent support people here. So it's a, it, it is a large team. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, um, well, let's start with the questions. Um, the first one was from uh, Rachel and she asked, should you only use service service if you want to sell your notes? And again, I'll be biased. I'll say yes, but <laughs> here's uh, it's not quite that simple. I, I think for notes that uh, you have to look at the value of the note. If a note is a, is a worth worth five dollars or five pounds, mm -hmm. you, you have to ask yourself, is it worth spending twenty dollars to get that graded? The mm -hmm. honest answer is probably not. So there's the, you have to look at what the actual note is. But for there's a lot of people that have an emotional attachment to the hobby. They want to have consistency. So all their notes yeah. are graded, for example. In that case, yes, you certainly do it. But but any note that's worthy of going into an auction, a, a higher value note, I would say you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you don't have third party certification. And that's really for the for the sales results. And if you look at all the major auction houses in the world, so Spink, for example, on your side of the world, or you look mm -hmm. at Heritage Auctions or Stax Bowers or Lynn Knight or Archives International or all the major auction houses, DNW in, in London. Yeah. Um, you know, they they are they are and are increasingly um, using third party certification and and we we uh, dominate that um, and they they do it for a reason one is they're achieving better results for their their clients yeah. and for themselves and they're, they're also not having as many disputes on the grade if they say it's vf the client gets the note and says i don't i don't agree um, you know they might have to accept a return here yeah. The yeah. notes graded. It's it's a third party neutral opinion. If you have a problem with that grade or still don't agree, you're welcome to submit it to PMG. But the the auction house is now uh, that that responsibility has been transferred over to the grading company. So it's it's really made their lives easier as well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And just um, following on from that, um, someone else has asked, what difference in revenue does a certified note bring? against a similar uncertified note of the same quality. So quite oh, a I'd love to have a, <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to have a consistent answer to that, but um, it, it can be significant. And I'm talking about sometimes it's multiple times and where we find the real significant differences are tend to be in the higher uncirculated grades. So the people yeah. that are looking for absolute perfection, as you go from 60 to 70, you can, you can see significant differences. So if someone, offers you, here's an uncirculated note I'm selling you. It's raw, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I see it on eBay, okay, it looks okay, but I'm not sure, mm -hmm. um, versus someone's offering on eBay a 68 EPQ note. I, I guarantee you that that, that note could go for $2,000 versus maybe a couple hundred for that raw note because you just don't know what you have. So I'd like to say there's, a, there's an easy answer. Um, but we've seen it, uh, you know, certainly you're talking about 20 or 30% more and, and in many, many cases, multiple times as you get up into those, those uh, high uh, uncirculated grades because that, a, a collector, those, those high uncirculated grades like the 67, 68, 69, 70s are, are obviously much more difficult to find a note in that type of pristine condition mm -hmm. and people will pay for them, but they want to make sure it really is that and they'll pay significantly yeah. more. But you'll, you'll also see, you know, just a, a VF note that's sold in an auction. Well, there's a difference. VF can be VF 20 to VF 35. And if, if someone tells me it's VF, I'm going to have to assume it's maybe 20, 25. Um, but if it's in a holder at 35, okay, this is a note that's, that's a darn good note. It's really approaching EF. I'm going to pay more for that. So that's, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have an exact percentage, but, um, there is a reason why auction houses are using third party certification and that's because it achieves more money. And I guess the bottom line is it will, it will increase the value. So we can't say exactly what the percentage is, 
but 99 times out of 100 it will increase that not the value the uh yeah and, it's, it, and as i gave the example we were talking about that um india thousand rupee note yeah. it's not that not that putting it in holders made it a better grade it's exactly the same note inside or outside yeah. the holder it's that confidence and trust that yes it really is this grade it's been independently verified to be that grade yeah okay great okay um nicholas asks i have a note i want to get graded what do i need to do okay and, uh, and i'll take it from the perspective of I'll, I'll tell nicholas he should be using pmg so i'll take it from that uh, yeah that perspective but yeah from from pmg there's there's two ways you can submit your note you can uh become a, a certified uh, a collectible society member and that's a very easy and painless process you can you can go online and i mentioned uh you can even join for free to get to, to get our online uh resources but to actually submit notes to PMG, mm -hmm. um, you have to become a paid member, um, and but that could be as little as twenty-five dollars. I'm mean, take I'll, I'll take this from the U.S. side because I know those numbers oh. the best. But uh, for as little as twenty-five dollar membership, you can submit notes. But there's also uh, a couple of other uh, memberships, so you, you can have a, like a hundred and fifty dollar membership. But that credits you bet you get one hundred and fifty dollars in grading credits. So essentially, if you're going to submit notes, it's free. And you can also go up to the, a higher level, which we call the elite type um, membership, which is uh, 299 US dollars. But that it gives, also gives you 150 grading credit, but you get 10% off grading. So if you have a fair number of notes to do, yeah, that's a, that, that's a real benefit. So that's one way. Go up, become a member and submit directly. Um, if you don't want to do that or only have one or two notes, and uh, you can go through an, one of our PMG authorized dealers. And the authorized dealers um, have been approved by PMG, so they have to go through a rigorous process where they're vetted first. Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody who's a, who's a PMG um, authorized uh, dealer, you would be able to submit a note into them, and that dealer would then submit the note to us. And you can find... PMG authorized dealers around the world um, on our website. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, how do you proceed with very good counterfeit notes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, million dollar question see, there. Uh, how do we proceed? Well, let's see. We um, first of all, I mentioned authentication is is so important. So that is really the first thing when a grader is looking at this note. You're, you're going to in your mind is is this genuine before I start analyzing the grade is is this genuine mm -hmm. so we two most important tools that a grader will have and I brought is a magnifying loop and just a, a handheld shine ultraviolet light yeah and um, so this we, we can see a lot with this of so our own eyes and then these two pieces of equipment um, we can usually see pretty quickly um, either it's definitely counterfeit or there's something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. if, if we're suspicious about something, um, we can then send it into that specialized high tech equipment I was talking about that will then do some very deep analysis on it and allow us to see clearly what's going on here. So if someone's added a piece and it's been professionally restored, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely to escape our, our uh, attention once a grader is spotted something's going on. So if a note has been determined that it is um, counterfeit, it will not go in our holder. And I, I'll, I'll put a caveat on that. Um, there, sometimes we will put uh, um, what we call contemporary counterfeits yeah. in holders that, that are collectible. So these are vintage collectible notes that where the banks are no longer in existence. So I'm not talking about like a, a, a modern Federal Reserve note or a Bank of Canada note. Um, that that's an obvious deception <laughs> to try to uh, to try to counterfeit a note, and, and it's illegal to hold those. We would not put those in in holders. But uh, so just I'll say in general, for uh, once we've determined that it is counterfeit, it does not go in a holder unless in the rare case that there's a collectible value to a vintage you note. Know, then, we, but it's clearly labeled on the holder. This is a, um, a contemporary counterfeit. Yeah. Okay, and just following on from that, you may have partially answered this one. Are there any mm -hmm. notes that you won't grade? 
that you just wouldn't. Yes, and, and you're, you're right. I partially answered that. I think that uh, maybe we'd fall into three broad categories of, of notes we wouldn't grade. So first that we discussed is counterfeit. Mm -hmm. We won't grade counterfeit notes. Um, the second is altered notes. So it's a genuine note, but it's but they've done something to try to change the appearance of it to make it seem like something it's not. And you saw the examples of the solid yeah. eight serial numbers. I, I've corrected the three and turned that into an eight. Uh, that's an altered note. We will not put that in a holder. It's, it's meant to deceive collectors. We're not going to give it a, a mileage by putting that into a, into a holder. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then I think the third broad category is what we call questionable authenticity. And you have to remember when a note goes in a holder, PMG is guaranteeing that this note is genuine. So if we look at a note and a grader, he'll, he'll take his, his loop and he, and he analyzes the note. And he says, uh, something's going on. You know, they've redrawn some of this design. It's a, uh, I'm not quite a hundred percent sure exactly what's going on here. And I think it could be there. And then, then we'll do some special tests on it. If we are not 100% convinced that we can accurately describe this note, we will not put it in a holder. So if we think something's going on, we may use the term questionable authenticity and send it back. It doesn't mean the note is genuinely counterfeit, but it also means we don't have the confidence to put it into a, a holder. So, and you'll also see um, some more of the esoteric items come in that uh, maybe are outside the boundaries of of, of what we consider a numismatic item. So, so maybe something like a check um, that, that we wouldn't tend to, to put that in a holder or maybe some um, satirical um, yeah. note we wouldn't put it. Really, I mean, PMG has been very good over, over the years we've been grading more as we get more knowledge, more and more things are put into holders. So there's very few things we won't put in a holder aside from something that's seriously a, a counterfeit or, or altered. Um, but again, we have to be confident we can accurately describe it because if we can't, how can we say something that we don't know exactly what this is, is genuine. So that's the, that's yeah. the gray area of questionable authenticity. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, we're nearly out of time. I think, uh, Colin, okay. just one more question. Um, what are your favorite notes and why? So how, you know, how did you <laughs> start collecting notes uh, yourself? Boy. <laughs> ah, well, the, uh, I, I think uh, I, I think collect, collecting is really a gene you're born with. I, I don't know if everyone would agree with me, but you're yeah. either a collector or you're not. Yeah. But I, I I I started collecting specifically notes. I started with coins, and I I lived in the United States at that time, and then moved to Canada when I was young. And in Canada, um, they had two dollar bills, and, and they were a different color than they 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 were orange instead of green. It's like I was just blown away. I was like, this, this is really cool. And it just, uh, I, that always stuck with me. And um, for me, my, my favorite, if, if you look at a category, what's my favorite note? It's vintage notes. I love vintage notes from the early 1800s to the, to the earlier 1900s, large, beautiful size uh, artwork notes. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's the history. I mean, I, this may sound funny, but I, I know the the royalty. So Victoria, Edward the Seventh, George the Fifth, George the Sixth, Queen Elizabeth. When I say that, I'm thinking in my mind is flashing images of notes <laughs> yeah. going through that. So yeah. I actually have learned a lot of my history through yeah. notes, and I'm able to remember it. It's an association for me. But it's the love of the artwork and the history that that goes with it, and um, that that. Uh, really sparked my collector gene that I think that I was born with to focus on, on paper money. But it was really to the time of the year. I mean, I have, my focus currently is, as I mentioned, South and Central American banknotes, but I started off because I lived in Canada on, on Canadian mm -hmm. notes, I'd bank of Canada. Then as I actually started working and had a bit more money, I could then uh, collect more of the specialized private banks in Canada. Yeah. I then moved to Singapore for a few years and all of a sudden, Wow, there's a whole world out here of, of Asian notes, and I heavily got into that for many years. And then one job uh, took me into South and Central America, and I really look at the beauty of these notes, and I think they're underappreciated. And I, I just, uh, I, I just fell in love with that side. So I, I've shifted my loyalties a, a few times, but uh, I'm gen generally, I'd say it's vintage paper money, yeah. and I, and I just love 
the camaraderie and the community. I've met so many people through the years that just have a deep love of this hobby and you just have a natural connection with them. And it's a great diversion from your day-to-day -day job to be able to go out and talk about something that's completely away from your normal job grind and just, and just talk with like-minded people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. agree with all of that. Um, well, that's brilliant, Colin. Thanks so much for your time today you. and for sharing your expertise. Um, you can see on the screen here we have the, um, some contact details there, so the website and the email. So if anyone else has any questions, um, any questions come to them uh, after the webinar, as they sometimes do, um, do feel free to email PMG. Um, the Festival of Coins is running until the 16th of October at allaboutcoins.co.uk. Uh, so do take a look over there and don't forget we've got another webinar tomorrow when we're discussing the certification of coins, tokens and medals. So we'll see you there. So thank you so much, Colin. Have a great day. Thanks very much, Matt. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.